Hello, everybody. It is great to be here one more time today. And my name is Gary Fowler. And I'm the CEO, President, and Founder of GSD Get You Done Venture Studios, a premier AI and quantum venture studio located in the heart of Silicon Valley. I'm a 17-time serial entrepreneur with several unicorns under my belt. Love artificial intelligence and quantum computing. Been in the been AI for as long as I can remember. And with that, I'd like to invite my incredible guest today. My friend Sanjay Bahatia is also a serial entrepreneur, all-around good guy, and he likes to go biking. So we're going to talk today about ChatGPT and how we're going to change the world. And we got a big announcement today because we've got something coming out very shortly. And with that, I'd like to bring my friend Sanjay. Hi, Sanjay. How are you doing today? Hello. Happy Tuesday. Glad to be here. Yeah, great. So how are you doing? So tell us a little bit about Sanjay. How in the world did you get an artificial intelligence? Oh, uh, you know, my first company I uh, founded is in, uh, in my dorm room. And I said, hi, anytime you wanted a report or a dashboard from a, a system, you know, data was just starting to get really big. And so people had so much data, they couldn't fit it into a spreadsheet anymore. So you had to use databases to create these dashboards. And, you know, it was an engineering process. You have to do requirements, you have to, you know, design it, everyone agrees. It took, you know, it took months just to get something changed. And uh, so we used artificial intelligence to s analyze the, uh, the actually the structure of the data. And with that, we pushed out user experience capabilities that made it really easy for people to build their own reports, customize dashboards, and it took the, uh, process out of IT. And so uh, that was, you know, my, my first, uh, you know, kind of usage of it. And then uh, really ke just kept going on there, you know, did a quantitative hedge fund where we use artificial intelligence. We, uh, my last big project was actually work with Rihanna's Fenty brand to launch physical stores. And we use LIDAR sensors in the back of iPhones to scan people with no photography to protect their privacy in, in the middle of Omicron and COVID, no contact. We then used AI to stitch together death maps in a way that we could create an avatar of the person that's just, you know, no, no photography, just the 3d reconstruction and use that to do incredibly accurate sizing. Uh, and then, you know, of course, uh, you know, right after that, I've been trying to solve this problem of how do we, how do great people meet with each other in this complicated world and, you know, started working with open AI over a year ago and using their, you know, large language models and natural language understanding to solve the problem of, uh, you know, time, which is our most valuable asset. And so now, you know, at Renday, we're, you know, creating always available AI for growing your appointments. And uh, we have a bunch of great stuff coming out and uh, are really excited to grow this business and make it something a billion people use one day. Yeah. So, I mean, that's, that's it. I mean, this problem of infobesity, where we're out, we're trying to do multiple calendar scheduling, trying to go out and, and look for a presentation. I remember a few years ago, when we developed some AI and we said, I want to find the presentation from the guy from Boston. And so across multiple channels from uh, Gmail to Slack, we could actually search, you know, but are we really ready for it, Sanjay? I mean, these models coming out, is ChatGPT too far ahead of us or where are we? What, where do you, you know, think there's, there's some concerns. I mean, a lot of people have uh, kind of signed a letter recently, including people like Elon Musk that. Uh, well, wait a know, minute. Elon Musk is one of the funders of OpenAI. Put yeah, he's one of the, one of the founders. Deal with that? And then uh, and then he left and they went in a different direction. I think his vision was that, uh, you know, they call it AI because it would be open, open source, open models. But it uh, because because of the dangers of what they had created, they, uh, you know, they believe it was better to, to create a more private API that's far more controlled. So, you know, this is, this is definitely a dangerous thing, but, you know, my belief, the greatest danger is really more that the world is undergoing a massive population collapse, but 70% of, you know, countries have had negative population growth for a long time. This isn't a new problem, but it's sort of COVID kind of exacerbated it. And so, you know, I don't know about, you know, where, everyone lives but uh you know in south florida here it's almost impossible to get anyone to you know if i need my dog groomed or i need a you know a haircut or something like that's almost impossible to call a business that's going to have somebody there available to pick up the phone and answer you know you kind of play phone tag and go back and forth which is part of what run day you know really solves for you but um you know it's really something where it, 
it's not so much that we're ready for it, but what what's the alternative that's, that all of our advanced economies kind of collapse? Um, absent some of the countries like, you know, like America traditionally, that's good at immigration. Most countries are not, and they just don't have the uh, the young workforce that's available to take care of the the aging population and, you know, operate the economy. So AI is really, uh, you know, people people sort of their first concern is it's going to take my job. Well, it's it's not going to take your job. A lot of younger people are doing two or three jobs right now. There's like way too many jobs, and this is perhaps the only solution we have. You know, um, you know, it's interesting. We just had somebody uh, respond to us. So we're in we're in multiple channels. I believe we're at eight channels now out all over the world. Um, you're right. We need to like think together. And David, thanks for writing that to us. You know, see, he said, seems like a lot of us are looking at these same opportunities. You know, it's right. This infobesity problem we have, what you're saying is using the resources we have efficiently and effectively. So to be able to use less people, if we have less people, to be able to schedule them so we can get them there on time. It's incredible. So tell us a little bit about Run Day. You know, how wide does it go? I know you were talking about ChatGPT and having it enabled, but how wide is it? Pretty wide. You know, we recently uh, <coughs> a feature where we're using lightning fast QR codes to connect people to the artificial intelligence. Imagine you're in a networking event and you see someone next to you and uh, you want to connect. Uh, we actually have QR codes that enhance our AI experience where you can, even if you're on an airplane, have that your contact information, you know, your LinkedIn, your Twitter, as well as your, your run day capabilities on that QR card instantly on that person's phone. And so we see this as something we're really, our mission is focused on growing appointments globally. It's just way too hard to do the back and forth. Okay, we met. Okay, when are you available? When are you available? And then half the time it never happens or you lose a business card. You know, that's the problem we're solving. The combination of like, how do you connect people? How do you optimize your time, grow your appointment base? And also how do, you know, how do businesses that are in operation who just simply can't build call centers or even hire somebody to sit at the front desk, how do they, you know, grow their business and continue to, you know, operate and grow and thrive in a workforce that's, you know, in, in a crisis mode and probably will be according to some estimates for the next, you know, 20, 25 years. So Rende is really built to solve that challenge. So on one end of it, it's a, it's a free personal assistant. So you can email Rende and five other people and say, Hey, let's meet. And it will do all the orchestration of time zones and availability and figure out when everyone, uh, and then, you know, create your zoom or teams meeting for you and send it out to everyone. So you can be walking your dog and say, you know, I need to meet with these five people, you know, BCC run day and send. So that at one end, it does some very basic things like that, that a great personal assistant do. At the under, other end, we actually produce AI chatbots very rapidly. So it's for processes as complex as hiring engineers. So imagine you have a WhatsApp number, you know, it's very popular in India and your candidates can simply write in. They immediately do a screen with the artificial intelligence, they upload their resume, and it's able to give HR an assessment of why somebody's a good fit for a job, in addition to which interviewer would be the best fit for that candidate, things that would take weeks, you know, and then by then somebody else is hired. Or them. never, you never, yeah, you never, never, never do it. You don't know who the right interviewer is gonna be for somebody because you don't know what their personality's like, you know, what their sentiments are like. That's incredible. So, you know, where do you see Run Day in a year from now? Uh, we, you know, we just grew from, uh, you know, we launched kind of early last year. We got to about 1,000 people Christmas, and our goal was to have 10,000 users by the end of the quarter, which was a couple of days ago, and uh, we, we blew that away. We have, fit, you know, 16,000 users for Q1, and, you know, and it's not that we're, we're advertising more. You know, we do almost no advertising, and uh, we're starting to see a lot of word of mouth where people are starting to use it, and their, their guests are starting to see the value and having an artificial intelligence organize your calendar and we're seeing uh you know some organic and viral growth so uh you know a year where you know we, we see ourselves north of a hundred thousand users perhaps moving into the millions we also see a lot of partnerships so uh you know everything i described so far we actually you know give away for free just to sort of get people on the platform but for enterprises the the more people that are involved the exponentially harder it is to coordinate and optimize everyone's time so for enterprises where you're producing these capabilities from processes like hiring or 
imagine, uh, you know, my, my girlfriend's younger and uh, we, we have a subscription to a, you know, a massage service, um, but we never go because she, you know, as a Gen Z, she, uh, you know, doesn't want to call them. And that's indicative of the newer generations. They think of phone calls almost like fax machines, which is so, so slow and inefficient. They'll just rather take their business elsewhere. And so, you know, we're seeing lots of partnerships. So the back end systems that power med spas and, um, you know, talent agencies and clinics and auto repair. So like really partnering with the leaders in those ecosystems and putting these capabilities in front of them. And, and we're making it so simple that, you know, I was uh, had to do reset some with the bank the other day and I was on the phone and literally four times I had to type in my account number and my tax ID. Runday knows who you are. It knows your phone number. You know, as long as you're sending a message from a secure phone, it knows who you are. So for hiring and shift management, we're doing some things up in Canada where they can literally just text in, hey, I can't work Saturday, but I can work Monday. So just sort of a one line text and the system goes through the system of APIs and, you know, resets the, the schedule, looks for other people to fill in that slot. There's a lot of capabilities like that. So we see, you know, much of the workforce, the hiring and the, uh, the staff coordination processes globally, you know, more and more people, hundreds of thousands, perhaps millions, you know, using Runday to do this over simple text messages in a year. No, that's fantastic. In fact, we just had somebody respond saying, we are actively looking for a solution as Sanjay is describing. Love it. A lot of people are. Yeah, yeah. So uh, uh, David's, I think, with Camer in um, in California. So he was actually at GSD at our uh, demo day. So it's fantastic. So you know, Sanjay and I have a big announcement. We've written a book called Artificial Imagination. It's going to be coming out shortly. So a lot of the questions that you have out there, are things like infobesity and the impact of ChatGP, we're going to be discussing it in greater detail in our book. So check that out. Sanjay, what's going to happen with ChatGPT? Where's it going to go? I mean, we've talked about three, three dot five, four. Where is it going to go? Is it going to be human-like, Sue? What's going to happen with ChatGPT? You know, it's already pretty human-like. One of the biggest uh, benchmarks that, uh, you know, it's funny when you talk about AI, it's sort of like every few days, it's like you got to keep up. It's hard to keep up with the pace of progress. But what's, you know, what's happened in the last sort of several or couple weeks is really ChatGPT4 is able to do things like, uh, you know, AP exams. So ChatGPT 3.5, it could do the law exam, past, it could take the bar and it ranked in the bottom 10th percentile. ChatGPT 4 actually ranks in the top 10th percentile. So you're talking about something that, you know, in theory can give a lot of, lot more, you know, guidance in, in just over a couple of days. And so what's happening next is this idea of, uh, you know, self-reflection where it sort of can generate multiple ideas and then reflect on it. And you can sort of say, hey, you know, give me this question, write me a poem where every uh, word begins with the letter E and it, and it gets, you know, perhaps it gets it wrong by one, you know, one word. And then without telling it what it did wrong, you can just respond like, well, are you sure? And it can self-reflect. And in one of the benchmarks, they, uh, they rank sort of the, the, the capability of human like uh, not Wait, just what do you mean self reflect? So re self reflection is where it can evaluate what it just said, go a little bit deeper, and without being told any specifics, uh, self correct and enhance its own response. You know, oh, like, right. so it's learning. It, it, exactly, it's 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 learning from it, but it's learning from itself. So mm -hmm. it's learning from its own process. Is it using ladder networks or VAE? What is it doing? I mean, it's. It sounds like a ladder network, right? Is that what it is? Or? It's using additional compute to um, imagine it's um, it's almost like an ensemble. Mm -hmm. Where imagine you had ChatGPT and you asked it the same question twenty times, and then it you asked that you gave it those twenty responses, and then you asked it to pick the best one. So it reviewed all of them against each other, and you know maybe the first answer wasn't the best. So, but when you have 20 other possibilities, it can sort of evaluate its own thinking and, you know, create a new answer based on that, that process. Wow. That's incredible. So, you know, you look at Runday, I mean, everybody 
across multiple vertical markets has to do scheduling. So I can see this for sales and customer service. Where do you see the biggest impact? The biggest impact is for businesses who want to operate and grow their business and have some kind of service or appointment system. So think of getting a haircut, a couple's massage, a job interview where there's talent. Anytime, you know, we, we've really fine-tuned our APIs to be very aware of time. So if you say, hey, let's do this interview, you know, Sunday afternoon after Halloween, right? It actually contextually understands, you know, what time zones you're in, when you wake up, when you sleep, what's a realistic time and day and what what is halloween you know what is sunday it understands all those concepts from an nlu perspective not just you know translating to uh not not just a translation perspective and it can do that but more importantly it can handle the complex mechanics of okay i have a i have an all hands meeting of 100 people some are more important than others they're all in all different time zones. There is no perfect answer, right? There's no exact time. Everyone's available and everyone's awake. But then how do you, of, of all of these impossibilities, how do you come up with a solution anyway? How do you get creative? How do you have an imagination? It's like, okay, well, if you do it this way, only Stacy and Bob have to wake up a little bit early, right? So these other 98 people have a, have a convenience. So that kind of reasoning um, and then that's kind of why we call the book artificial imagination, because you have to imagine a solution that's actually impossible based on, you know, a lot of information. And, and what's different about AI now is ambiguity and imperfect data. Yeah, yeah. Well, this is what we say, making the seemingly impossible possible. That's where it is. And if you look at it, what about if I'm in another country and I speak another language? How are we going to be able to use run day? Let's say we're in... Um, we're speaking Afrikaners and we need to do some some scheduling or we're in uh, France and we need to be able to do some scheduling for something like a windshield. Well, I can see this across multiple. I mean, delivery and schedules. I know I just did a closet system in my place and to be able to schedule the people came, that, to come in was a real pain because we're going back and forth in and out. Where do you see that? I mean, it's like scheduling is so important. Yeah, one of the cool examples from, uh, I think, the chat GPT 3.5 is they wrote a sentence in 27 different languages, and it was able to sort of understand what it means. So, yeah, we're, we're using the translation capabilities for localized instances where, you know, we don't have to go put the effort into translating. And this is a big thing for movies where they're, they're going to be <coughs> a movie and actually reconstruct the, the facial expressions and everything to every language all at once. So imagine all these great movies that were never translated into, into your favorite language that can just, you know, press a button, pay for a whole bunch of compute, and it can reverse engineer the, the script, write, you know, re rewrite the scripts, but also, you know, do almost like a deep fake where you're changing the, 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 the facial expressions of the actor and instantly have every language. So I think that's kind of this new reality we're going to find ourselves in where products can be instantly translated into every language at once, but not in a way where the you know, classic examples of the Chevy Nova, where they call the, which means no go, um, they label something, you know, in a, in a way that that wasn't ideal for that, uh, that language or that culture. And so mm -hmm. really, it'll, it'll have the cultural context in order to do that as good as the best human translators. Well, you know, soon we're going to have the situation where you can say, I'd like to have a movie about uh, my favorite superhero, whoever that is, Superman or Iron Man. Can you make it? I want a happy ending and I want to save the planet this way. And I want it to be an hour and a half. You know, and those yes. kind of things are going to happen where you have these hyper personalized custom events. It's going to be interesting to figure out what's real and what's not real. You know, I yeah, know just that. last month, uh, NVIDIA released their, I think it's called Picasso platform. And one of the innovations where they're, you know, they're not creating the application, but they're creating the fundamental architecture and infrastructure for, for text to video to work. And so that, that idea of, uh, you know, even an interview like this, you could in theory have enough data on the both of us in previous interviews and construct something like this through AI one day soon. That's great. Well, I don't know if that's great. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Everyone's everyone surprised. Wait a second. I'm not sure. I like that. Though. Yeah, everyone's surprised. Which jobs? Are we always thought accounting and these really boring mechanistic yeah, yeah. jobs. Would be I don't know one. if you need newscasters anymore. You know, going to get to a point where you know somebody's about the weather. The person looks like the person, right? But in reality, they're not real. 
Um, it's interesting. And then, you know, if we if we look at the, the future, we've got scheduling, we've got translations, we've got, I mean, where else do we see the impact of ChatGPT? How far is it going to go? Is it going to go to MedTech? Is it going to go to manufacturing? Where is it going to land? A lot of it is sort of this idea of, of complex coordination over multiple sort of transactions or activities. So what we have today is, you know, kind of a, a chat that does <coughs> context, but what it's missing is, uh, you know, unfortunately right now my, uh, my girlfriend's learning the walk on crutches. Uh, she was biking and, uh, you know, had a, had a small accident and, you know, there's, you know, there, there's lawyers and doctors and specialists, and there's a lot of people involved, but nobody is really sort of bothered to make sure her physical therapy got scheduled. So imagine not just scheduling one thing, but be like, okay, well, you know, you've had this MRI, you've had this, and this process, having a system that really cares about you and is sort of this uh, unconditional commitment to- Oh, uh, you're speaking my words, son. Yeah. You know what I was going to be saying. Yeah. Right? Just like your grandmother that loves you and cares about you. You're right. And that's going to happen. That empathy and compassion, these new models are going to be incredible. Right. It's going to make our lives a lot better, more fulfilled. You know, where's the point, Sanjay? You know, the technology has kind of created these silos for people. You know, I know when when uh, I go out, uh, sometimes when I go out with my daughter and if you're listening, Elizabeth, <laughs> I'm just saying it. She'll be on her uh, iPhone and she'll be texting all the time. You know, we create kind of silos with technology, but these new tools are kind of bringing us together again, aren't they? They're making humanity come back. It's very interesting. We've gone a far, we've gone way far away from it, and now we're coming back. What do you see? I mean, how, how, you know, if we start with emotion and compassion and now scheduling and efficiencies, how close is this going to be? Are we going to be able to recognize what's artificial and what's real? You know, one of the one of the founders of, uh, you know, Deep Neural Networks um, from the physics was on CBS the other day. And then, you know, people were saying, well, Chad, GB, it's just an autocomplete. Right. So and his response was, well, sure, but so are you. Right. So the human neural network, the trillions of synapses we have that are able to complete language, you know, in theory, isn't isn't that much different. We're starting to understand more and more about the brain. So it becomes an interesting philosophical question of if you can't tell the difference, does it matter? You no, know, I mean, I feel it does. Um, but the uh, it will be a while before this is the scary part sometimes before we are able to actually understand the inner workings of what we create. These neural networks are black boxes, you know, they have billions of parameters, but to actually go in and inspect the machinery and see what it's doing, why it's doing this, we we don't really know, right? So we don't totally know why our own brain works, let alone why these artificial brains works. And so we're not, our scientific understanding of what we've created is not at the level of where we know what's possible. You know, I think it's really about specialization. So in terms of like artificial AGI, a generalized intelligence that can sort of do anything. I, I think we're very far from that. Um, and the, an example is like some of the first AIs were vision problems where they're telling the difference between cats and dogs. Well, it required, you know, thousands or millions of pictures for that, for it to work. Right. So it takes an enormous data set that's very curated, you know, a child or even an animal can start telling the difference between a cat and a dog very quickly with very little data. And so what our brain does with very little information um, is something AI is not even close to, right? So we're not even close to developing that kind of capability. I, I don't know if we ever will. Maybe once we have quantum computers, we're able to, to do that because the brain might be a... Well, and that's the other thing I was going to say. You know, we take a quantum computer, which is 100 million times faster than the fastest supercomputer today, which means that what would take uh, 10,000 years on a supercomputer takes 200 seconds. By the way, these are the real statistics from Google. So we start to add that to ChatGPT. I mean, imagine the possibilities. Everything starts to change. Here's the other thing. I mean, for nefarious purposes, with some of these tools that are out there, I mean, there's good people and there are bad people. I mean, I could see states, you know, using like, utilizing these technologies in a non, not good way. So, you know, we got to be careful of what's out there because we don't know you're right we don't know what the possibilities are exactly and what's going to happen 
Yeah, people are concerned about, well, losing their job first and then some kind of Terminator style, you know, um, where we're against the machines. I, I have no, I mean, there's no, maybe after we have quantum computers, that's something to consider. But based on current technology, it, it can't tell dogs and cats without thousands or millions of examples, right? So it's not going to really be do that. But, you know, will people be able to weaponize it like they weaponize everything else? That That's really the concern is how will, you know, nefarious states or people use AI to, uh, to deceive us or, or worse. Yeah, no, I agree with you hundred percent. Listen, we're coming to the top of the hour, closing thoughts and how do people get a hold of you, Sanjay? Yeah, just get a hold of me at Sanjay at Runded.ai. And, uh, you know, we would love to get feedback in the book. So we're taking, uh, uh, we have a landing page, just go to Runday.ai slash book and you can uh, sign up to get an early copy. Sounds great. Yeah, we spent a lot of time on that, and uh, it'll be interesting for all of you out there. Thanks for taking time. Made a v- busy schedule, Sanjay. And thanks for all of you for attending one more time. GSD presents Silicon Valley AI and Tech. And my name is Gary Fowler, and I am your host. Stay happy, stay safe, and stay healthy. And I'll be back at you again on Thursday. Take care. Thanks, Sanjay. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye. Take care.